Okay. Good evening and welcome to the public hearing um, for May 15th, 2008. This public hearing was originally for a referendum question called, Shall an ordinance prohibiting retail marijuana establishments and the retail marijuana social clubs in the town of Acton be enacted? And that's what this public hearing was originally about. Um, however, there have been some changes at the state level that makes that question um, that was proposed on the referendum irrelevant. Um, before we get started tonight, do we pledge the flag? Um, no. Typically not. No. Okay. okay. So just wanted to clear that. Um, there are some guidelines to follow during the public hearing. Only Acton residents or property owners can speak. Um, and that's at the podium directed to the select board, not the audience. Um, we ask that you state your name and where you live or own property in Acton. Uh, there will be a three-minute limit at the podium with no returning or re rebuttals. And we are going to try to stick to the marijuana, the retail marijuana question and a po the possible upcoming um, limitation of home cultivation that has been introduced by the, at the state level. Um, there was one more thing. Oh, the marijuana committee is here. There's a few people here that are present from the marijuana committee, and they can speak at will and help answer any of the questions based on the research they have done during the process. So here we are, question. Um, we did end up pulling the question from the June 12th ballot because it is irrelevant and the text of the proposed ordinance references the old marijuana statute and so that was repealed and replaced and therefore cannot be enforced as it doesn't exist. So effective April 19th of this year, the newly created Title 28B of the main statute requires municipalities to opt in to allow mar uh, retail marijuana establishments. So this essentially is a ban on retail marijuana establishments. Other notable uh, changes include, um, but not limited to, uh, pro prohibits online sales, home deliveries, and drive-through sales. It removed social clubs altogether. It changed the definition of resident. It reduced the um, home cultivation count from six to three mature plants. Um, and there's other numbers that go along with that as far as immature plants. It's 12 immature plants and an unlimited number of seedlings to um, persons 21 and over. It removed municipal uh, revenue sharing altogether. So municipals, um, municipalities, cannot receive any revenue sharing from retail sales. So um, one loophole that we were brought to our attention is the concern with home cultivation that in section 1502 allows up to three mature marijuana plants, up to 12 immature marijuana plants, and an unlimited number of seedlings per personal adult use. Um, in three different locations, A, on a parcel or tract of land on which a person is domiciled, B, on a parcel or tract of land owned by the person on which the person is not domiciled, or C, on a parcel or tract of land not owned by the person and on which the person is not domiciled so long as the owner of the parcel of, or tract of land by written agreement permits the cultivation and care of the marijuana plants on the parcel or tract of land by that person. <clears throat> That's a lot of words to, to think about, but essentially this could create a large unregulated, unlicensed, uh, unlicensed outdoor grow that would not only be a nuisance to the community and their neighbors, but also um, not be within any zoning ordinance which could be enforced. So therefore, we are proposing an ordinance to avoid this type of scenario in order to protect um, the you know, children and neighbors and people under 21 um, in the town, essentially. <laughs> so I will open up to questions, comments concerns. My name is Tom Cashman. When I first heard about this and did a little research on it, um, I was troubled by, after reading the report, the disregard for the question of public health 
that was involved in the uh, proponents um, platform for this that was in the uh, uh, material that uh, Richard's committee uh, set up. So I, I got a little research done with the help of uh, Goodall Library and printed up six um, medical journals, uh, articles from the pediatric uh, health field, and uh, I'm going to try to make those available to as wide an audience as I can. Okay. Sounds Thank good. you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Wow. <laughs> Going once. <laughs> Going twice. Okay. Oh, yes. Yes. You, you did not Since use your full three one. minutes, even though we asked people not to come back up to the podium. Not exactly clamoring up. So. In the in the new provision, um, is is it the fact that the home rule authority of the town is not uh, available to utilize if and when we need it, pertaining to the new legislation that, that was drafted by? Uh, the legislature before they adjourned. The, I think the Home Rule Authority is in effect for this. It would be. Did you want to answer to that? Yeah. Clear? Thank you, sir. Yes. Oh, in respect to community. Well, uh, we are allowed to adopt an ordinance. Yeah, my name is Richard Nass. I live at 2924 Milton Mills Road. Um, if we, when you read the home cultivation piece, which is separate from the what I call the commercial piece, um, it clearly, uh, even though they don't say home rule, it really is a home rule thing. It allows the municipalities to set rules. It also tells the municipalities what they can't set rules on. They can't ban the, the cultivation. Right. So, so it's, uh, I think it's still a home rule provision. It allows you to set restrictions, um, and that's, I think, what we're going to embark on here. Uh, but I would still consider that to be a home rule provision. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I just urge people to read the report? It's online. The, yes. The, so the yeah. committee, the marijuana committee, uh, finished a report in late January. It is online under useful documents. Uh, so I would urge people. And there's really two documents there. It's the first one. It's the 20-page report. The other one is 500 pages of background material. Mm -hmm. So thank you. And that, does that go over the community grow? No. It, well, good point. The so. We, pages, we finished this report on January 26th and a couple weeks later gave it in. On page three, you'll see that we were warned by the folks that we talked to in the state of Washington and the state of Colorado that that was an oncoming um, event that they were trying, and they recommended that we don't do that. Mm -hmm. The term community grow or whatever was a term that we either were heard on the phone or we invented, you won't see that term in the statute. Yeah. So we have shortened it and suggested that the community grow is kind of like a CSA for vegetables, mm -hmm. except this is a little bit different. And uh, it's on page three, and this was late January that we had picked up on that. Mm -hmm. And essentially we were just warned by the folks out there not to let this happen. So. Also, um, I'll, I'll try to get the link to... Um, the 82-page document that just passed in April. Yeah. So it's LD 1719. If you want to go on the legislature's website and look under uh, bills, it's, you're right, it's 82 pages, and your eyeballs will be rolling by the time you read it. But it's, yeah. <laughs> My name is Jeff Russell. I'm at uh, 73 Mountain View Drive here in Acton. Uh, would you explain a little bit uh, more about the new main law that uh, puts our uh, uh, commercial marijuana issue uh, to rest completely? Um, so, yeah, the best that I can do it is the LD 1719 um, was written a while ago, but then the governor vetoed it, but the House and the Senate with a 
more than two-thirds majority vote overrode the veto, putting this opt-in and in that wording of the LD 1719 and included the wording where municipalities had to opt in in order to host retail estab marijuana establishments. Is that correct? Or commercial or... Commercial. So, in fact, um, Jerry Knowlton, 804 Milton Mills Road, part of the Marijuana Committee. Um, in fact, the Citizens Initiative um, was, if I remember correctly, opt-in. No, it was, it, was, it was opt out. You had to, you had to pass uh, a ban. The first bit of legislation, the one that we originally wrote the uh, um, ordinance against, was opt in. Okay, and we were considering writing an ordinance to ban commercial anyway, just to make the statement of what the town wants or doesn't want. Um, the new legislation is is even more proactive. So that, that it was an improvement in the sense that. Not only does the town have to opt in for whatever commercial licenses they want to opt in for, but any application that comes in, the town needs to act on that application within 90 days. And if we don't act within 90 days, it's seen as a rejection of the application. Um, so in essence, they kind of did belts and suspenders with that. But at the same time, on this personal grow piece, they opened this back door by allowing folks to get permission from a landowner to grow on their property. In essence, um, you could envision somebody deciding they want to become a, a pot farmer without any of the legislation, without any of the security, without any of the setbacks. They'd be permitted to do that under this law with no respect from the town at all. The town could do nothing about it. Um, however, the law outlined very um, definitively what a town could do to limit personal grow. So you can't take away an adult resident's right to grow three plants, 12 immature plants and any number of seedlings, but you can take away their right to grow it on a property where they're not domiciled or on a property from, by another owner. So that really becomes the, the uh, issue of having to take care of that. And, and what we had heard from both Washington State and Colorado was that they've seen an erosion over time by the lobbyists of the laws with respect to advertising, with respect to retail locations, with respect to all the ordinances. And they warned us that they were being pressed on community grows. So when we read this, we recognized immediately that this loophole was in there. I don't think the legislators actually knew what they were voting on or recognized the depth of it. Yeah. Does that answer your question? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just curious if the selectmen would, would uh, be open to any discussion in terms of where do we go from here? Oh, okay. So, so there we go. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So from here, um, we're, we are we have scheduled a new referendum question, um, which we will have a public hearing for on July 10th at 7 p.m. Um, to, the, to the effect of limiting home cultivation of marijuana for personal doubt use. So there'll be a new ordinance to vote on July 17th. Hearing on the, 10th. Hearing on the July 10th, Tuesday at 7. July 17th. Secret ballot, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. On the 17th. And we will not discuss that tonight because we'll save that for the next public hearing. <laughs> you got a little tidbit or a little opening on what that would be about. It's ninety nine percent done. I mean when so it's yeah. We don't want to give you something that's not one hundred percent. So but like I said, we can't we can't limit the uh, the three plants, we can't limit the twelve immature plants. Immature and we can't limit the seedlings. So um well, the that's, number of people that live yeah. in the home right. that are over 21. Right. But we can limit or try to um, limit them growing for anybody else or yeah. using their property. Yeah, we're not, yeah, not going to, we, we can't limit the, uh, like I said, the first batch there. So, but we can work on the uh, community grow side of it. So, mm -hmm. yep. 
If there are no further questions, I will close this public hearing. Do I have a motion? Make a motion. I'll second that. All in favor. Good night. Thank you, everyone.